Hello everybody and welcome to another movie review um, where today we are going to be talking about Saw 10. Yes, they've made 10 of them now. Can you believe it? They have made quite a few of them. Um, so I will say that the audience on my channel in particular is not really a massive gore fan base. Um, small fan base, but fan base nonetheless. Um, but that's okay. You know, this doesn't have to be for everybody, and it won't be for everybody. But it's interesting to see where this series has come from. Because you have seven in the main franchise, one through seven labeled as such, with Roman numerals, Saw 1, Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw 5, Saw 6, Saw 7, and then... um. Saw 8 is actually titled Jigsaw. The first one to actually have a name in the series. Saw 9 is a spin-off, which is... It's not in direct... At all. Like, it, it has nothing to do with any of the other ones. Um, and as far as I know, is the one that takes place the furthest in the timeline... Um, because after Saw 7, as of now, Saw 7 is the, the second or third furthest from the end, and Spy, uh, Saw 10 here takes place between 1 and 2. So, one question I, I'm sure some people are going to have is, what Saw movies do you have to watch to be prepared for Saw 10? Um... Primarily, to be fully knowledgeable on the events uh, and characters in Saw 10, I would say at least, at the bare minimum, 1 and 2. Um, if you can, at least 1, 2, and 3, if possible. Um, if you want to go to the far extent, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you want to be, like, diehard, know everything, all the way through 7. Um... Eight and nine are pretty solid to not need any connective tissue um, to watch. They can just be watched on their own accord in any order. Um, if you want to know the chronological order, I can put it at the very end of this video, but that does include some spoilers. So um, if you really do want to know that, I guess I'll leave a warning at the very, very, very end. Uh, not some spoilers for Saw 10, just some spoilers in general. Um, but the chronological order is pretty simple, but I'll throw that in at the very, very, very end. So you don't have to worry about that for now. But, um, Saw 10 is the story of Jigsaw. Now, what do you mean the story of Jigsaw? Well, if you don't know who Jigsaw is, watch the first one. Uh, the second one gives some information on it, but either way, that doesn't fully matter. Um, but this is the story of, really, of Jigsaw. It gives us more backstory to Jigsaw. Um, and if you don't know, Jigsaw uh, does have cancer. And this movie focuses heavily around him trying to get help for that and be able to live onward. And then having that all stripped away and taken away by a lot of greedy people. Um, and that'll be the easiest way to put this without spoiling the plot. Um, but when he finds out that the people are greedy, he decides they must be tested and decides to put them in a trap. Um, and a very w a different type of trap. A lot of times Jigsaw is very hands off, but this time he's very present. He's very there. Everything that happens, they're fully aware that he is there. Um, and on top of it, there is still a nice twist at the end, which is one of the things Jigsaw's, uh, the Jigsaw movies or Saw movies in general are good at is their twists. Um, I didn't, I don't remember three, four, five, or six that well. I actually really don't remember three that well. Um, I'm sure when I watch it, cause right now I'm, I'm going to go back through all of them. So when I watch, end up watching three again, I'm sure it'll click and be like, oh, yes, yeah, it's that one. But for now, those middle ones, I don't really recall. 
but um, one has a very good twist. Two has a pretty good twist, too. Uh, Jigsaw has a very good twist. Spiral doesn't really have a great twist, but you're either in two parties with that movie. You either see the twist coming or you don't. Um, it's It's like very, very one or the other. It's one side or the other. There's no in between. Um, when I saw that movie for the first time, I enjoyed that movie. I'm one of the people who enjoys Spiral a lot more than most people do. But also, it's kind of like a detective drama uh, and a cop drama. So, I kind of like those things. But um, I was able to figure out the who done it aspect of that. And I'll, I'll, give, I'll give more aspect of... Um, that at the end, I'll give a little, you know, clump up some of that in case you're interested. But, um, I can't really go too in depth to Saw 10. All I will say is this is the most story we've received in a Saw film out of every single entry, uh, including Spiral. And I feel like a lot of people don't like Spiral because they, people have grown attached to who jigsaw is and the characters in the saw universe uh including characters such as dr gordon um adam um amanda um you know all these characters that have showed up uh mark hoffman uh all these characters that have showed up through the course of all the films and they've grown attached to these characters and they like to see those characters that's the um the whole idea, you know, that's what people want to see, and that's what people like to see. But, you know, for me, that was what Spiral was. It was like a new creative take on the series, which a lot of times, 100%, people don't do with franchises. And 10 is that way, too. 10 is like an original entry, because you see it from a whole different side of things. All the other movies... You see it from the perspective of those in the trap. And although when the traps happen in 10, you still see it from their perspective. Um, it's still, you know, from their perspective, but the, the story is told from the protect, per perception and perspective of Jigsaw. And a lot of the time throughout this movie, uh, and I still feel this way, and I, don't, I think that's the whole idea behind it, is I have very mixed emotions of how I'm supposed to feel at the end of this movie. Um, I don't really, like, fully know how I'm supposed to feel. It's a very bad, but bad, but worse, but bad kind of a thing and I'm leaving that really vague on purpose but it's like you know yeah I can't really say much else I'm trying to find a way to say it but if I say it any other way I'm going to spoil the movie um the trailer does a good job of wrapping up the basic plot of the movie by the way without spoiling too much which is nice um but it's a very simplistic movie. It is the longest Saw film as well. Um, just under two hours, like two minutes under two hours. Um, and it looked very nice in the theater that I was watching it. And it filled the entire screen. Um, cause it's just two different formats. It's basically your full screen and your TV at home is what it ended up looking like. It's the best way to describe it. Easy, easiest way to describe it. And, Personally, I um I'm very I'm very happy with the entry. A lot of how this movie played out again was very original in comparison to a lot of the other um saw films cuz you know nowadays I like to think that some of the entries in the series is coming back and being revitalized. Uh, most of them at least, not just horror, have some creativity to them. You know, some new entries and... <laughs> Sorry, some creative uh, additions 
to their franchises, and Saw, I think, is definitely one of them. From Jigsaw Spiral and Saw 10, they all bring something different and are able to be unique entries into the franchise. Um, like three, well, four through seven are very mediocre and very bland films a lot of the time. Now, I do like them because they do carry over from one to the next. You know, it starts off where the last one left off for most of them, except three to four. There's a pretty big gap uh, in comparison between three to four. Um, also, just to note, there is a credit scene. Um, it's like midway through. I don't believe there's anything else at the end. I didn't stay fully to find out, but um, I don't believe so. I believe there's only one. And it's uh, midway through the credits. But the main reason you need to watch two, one and two, is there's one character that carries over from those. Um, and the character that carries over has some kind of crucial plot involvement in two. And if you watch this one before you watch two, you will end up getting that kind of aspect spoiled a little bit for you. Um, so you do need to watch two first. And there's another character that makes an appearance. And that character is shown through a lot of the other films. Um, on and off, of course, through different parts. But I would recommend at least watching three, maybe four. Again, I haven't seen three in a while. When I rewatch it here with my Saw rewatch, I will be more than glad to... Um, well, I mean... I'm more than glad I'm not doing another review just to tell you one little detail, but I'll be more inclined to be able to figure out where you should watch up to before you watch Ted. But granted, um, you don't need to watch a lot of them, which is nice. It's always good when a franchise can bring you in earlier um and then if you like that you can watch all the other ones because 10 movies in a franchise is a bit we're, we're we're at 10 which is more than the harry potter franchise um shorter movies of course but still more movies overall than the harry potter franchise i don't know i think it would be a little longer than watching the harry potter franchise uh now because of the 10 movie length but you definitely still um, Harry Potter movies are like two hours and 30 minutes. So, you know, you, you, those are pretty long a piece, but, uh, but yeah, if you like horror, I highly recommend this. Then, you know, I'd even recommend this movie to people who don't really like gore that much. There's, there's not a lot of gore. Um, it's only when the traps are involved. And I will say this one felt, which is, uh, not necessarily a bad thing. The traps were very well crafted, but it definitely felt like the traps were a lot less in comparison to a lot of the other movies. Um, a lot of the other movies have people in traps, and the movie focuses primarily on them in traps. Where this one more focused on the story outside of it and used the traps in the story to progress the story, kind of. Um, which, honestly, I like. I would not mind, like... I would not mind, like, some of these characters who show up through these films getting their own backstories. I think that would be amazing. Um, I think that would be such an incredible way to do this. You know, because, let's be honest. Uh, the actor playing John Kramer is getting a bit old. Um, that's another thing in this movie which I don't really care. This franchise isn't really known for using CGI to de-age things. It's a very, um, it's a very low budget franchise, which is also something I appreciate that these films can keep up such a standard when it's a very low budget. There's like minor CGI elements, obviously, probably, I have to say at this point, probably with most of the traps that, or they, exchange the actors out for like dummies and then physically do the traps on the dummies with like fake blood and all that um which would be really cool if that's the case i'd love to see on the bonus features of saw 10 see what they did if they did cgi or if they did dummies which i'm guessing they did dummies because they don't really use cgi on them which is also what's really nice and really cool is that these franchises are able to 
hold on to that older type of film style where we don't have CGI on everything. I mean, look at Marvel, for example. Even though I love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, they have so much CGI in that movie. And all of their movies, frankly, I mean, they're TV shows, too. 99% of everything that they do involves CGI. Um, and, you know, there could be a lot of reasons for that. And granted, you know, in space, you kind of need CGI because those kind of places, fantastical places don't really exist, or as far as we know, we don't have access to film in those places, um, because we haven't explored enough of space yet to be able to tell if it is in fact or not out there. But of course, they probably wouldn't get what they wanted anyways. But, you know, I like the grounded film style. I like being able to create a movie without CGI. I like to be able to have, you know... A movie where you can say little CGI or none CGI or no CGI was used. I appreciate that. Um, and of course, I think there has to be some, but still. And I want I want to know, just like, you know, when, when Spiral left off, which I, I would love a Spiral too, you know. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that movie. I enjoy that movie a lot. I would love a Spiral too. I would genuinely love to watch that story continue. And they could make a sequel very easily to that. Um, they could make a simple movie off of that ending and just keep it going with the same two main uh, antagonist and protagonist. Um, and I would be okay with that. Um, you know, not every movie has to be fantastical. You can just have some enjoyable movies. You know, but anyways, um, yeah, time to wrap up my Saw 10. Personally, for me, Saw 10, 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, you know, um, a lot of the characters, I don't know if I mentioned this, a lot of the characters in this movie look very, very old, like, and they do that in the franchise. There's a couple movies, I think Saw 10, they have a flashback with, uh, John Kramer in it, and they have have him have a backwards hat on to make him look younger. They do the same thing in Spiral. Uh, I don't know if any of the other movies do it, but in Spiral, they they have um, Chris Rock's character and his dad's character played by Samuel Jackson. You know, Samuel Jackson has a mustache, and Chris Rock has a backwards hat to make him look younger. It works enough. I don't mind it at all. But in these ones, they just look old. And again, this is supposed to take place between 1 and 2, so it feels a lot of, you know, it feels a little disjointed. But if you can look over that stuff, this is a pretty good movie, in my opinion. Again, not for everybody, and not everybody will want to watch it, but that's that. So, um, end off right here. If you do not want to have minor spoilers, I'm going to go through uh, chronological order and stuff like that of the franchise, so. You have been warned. Three, two, one. Okay, the chronological the chronological order of the Saw franchise. We'll start with Jigsaw, going to Saw 1, Saw 2, Saw 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Nope, that's incorrect. Back it up. Go back. As I'm a buffoon, uh, Jigsaw, Saw 1, Saw 10, Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw 5, Saw 6... Saw 7, and then Spiral, um, in the chronological order. Um, I don't necessarily think that 10 has to be watched between 1 and 2 chronologically. Um, I don't think you should watch it before 2. Um, and the order I would watch these movies in is as follows. Uh, and I will give some reasons in a second, but... Jigsaw Spiral can be interchanged, can be watched anywhere. If you are unsure if you like this franchise, Saw 1 and Spiral are going to be your bets to get introduced to this franchise. Saw 1 does not have that much gore in it. Um, it's a very low gore movie compared to all the rest. There's still a couple of sections that can disgust people, uh, even as simply as a character sticking their hand into a, a fecal matter filled toilet. It, 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 there's still some things that can disgust people, but it's a very tame one with a very good ending twist 
that I always get chills at, and I would have loved to see the movie in a theater when it first released with people. Um, I got to watch it in the theater more recently, so I'm lucky enough to say that I did. Sorry. But, personally, uh, a very good movie. But those two, and Spiral has lower gore aspects than most of them. Um, but the order I would watch them in, I would watch them in thus far one, two, three. Um, and again, without watching three through seven or three through six very recently, I'd say three, then ten, then four, five, six, seven, and eight. No, seven. Yeah, seven and then eight, and eight being Jigsaw. The the twist in this movie is a very good refresher. I'd recommend waiting to watch it until after you get through the main seven movies, especially after the later half of the franchise. Uh, most people think six and seven are the worst of the worst in the franchise, and frankly... I'm seven for me for my recent watch does have some good benefits to it, but I also do think that it is still a weaker entry minus those factors. Some of the traps don't make as much sense, and it's a very weak. You know, you have a good. You, they have a good story in that one, but again, a lot of the other Saw films have a side Saw trap going on, um, and some of them have the entire movie focused around the Saw trap. Um, but a lot of them, starting with 2 especially, like 2 does this, where it has a saw trap going on, and then a side story going on around it, which is also the main story. But that one, at least, the trap, uh, the people in the trap, and the trap, and the story going on outside of it are all intertwined. Some of them don't have that. Some of them just focus on the trap themselves. Um... But some people say four or five are the weakest in their opinion. I can understand that. I've not heard anyone say one is the weakest. Uh, Spiral is sometimes categorized as low, but I really like that one. It's pretty high for me again. I enjoy that one. I like the look of it. I like the actors in it. Um, I enjoy that movie very thoroughly. So, again... The way I'd recommend watching it is 1, 2, 3, 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, Jigsaw, and Spiral. Again, you can watch Spiral at the beginning, but I it, it seems fitting. You get through the main franchise, which is 1 through Jigsaw, including 10, and then you watch Spiral as it's kind of like a bonus. Again, yet we have yet to see if that series will continue. It's very likely it could. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea. I genuinely think it could make another good movie. But it depends on if Chris Rock wants to be in another one. You know, it, it all depends. It depends on a lot of the actors. Um, and I can look it up right now. I never looked it up. Will there be a spiral from the Book of Saw 2? Um, so, yeah, obviously um, this article is not correct, or this thing. Uh, it's from Screen Rant, so take that for what you will. Um, which I think they're mostly reliable. But this was a while ago. Uh, it's headed to theatrical release on May 14th, 2021. And they're saying the original Saw films are these year parts. So a sequel to Spirals or Spiral 2 could be May 2022. Um, which again, uh, Jigsaw, the Saw 10's release is more... Which also, it's it's it got moved out of October because of FNAF, I think, and I think they wanted to push it forward because of all the writers and actor strikes. Which, from what I I, I heard and saw, uh, the writer strike has been resolved, uh, which is a fantastic news to hear. Uh, now we need to, now we need the writer, not the writers, the actors to get their um, due correct pay, and we might not be in that big of a hurt locker next year when it comes to movies. Um, which is good. But anyways, 
Um, so yeah, it's saying that Saw Two, uh, Spyro Two, is not confirmed. Um, I would love. Yeah, Spyro from the Book of Saw is literally Saw Nine, um, which is true. So I would say if we were gonna get a Saw, a Spiral Two. Uh, if we were to get a Spiral 2, that could be something that happens next year. Um, as again, it's a very low-budget film. It'd be Chris Rock wants Spiral 2. I would love Spiral 2. Uh, and again, Saw 10, it's good, you know. I will say this right now, though. Um, and and this this all this stuff I'm seeing is old, because it's still relating Saw 10 to be Spiral 2, but... I guess no one thought that they would use Saw 10 and go back to including Jigsaw in it. But, um, all that's old. But I would say now's the time to get all the in-between movies done. So for a couple of years, and hold on, I'm going to stand up for a second. But for a couple of years, it'd be a good idea to focus on the main story and the main plot lines while the actors are younger. Because Chris Rock can, you know, Chris Rock is not going to get really old in the next two years. But the actor plays John Kramer um, and some other characters who possibly could make returns, you know. Because at this point, you, you're you thinking, um, number two has Danny Wahlberg in it. And there's not to say that you can't bring in other characters back, you know. Because some characters are supposedly killed off and then show up in later movies. And there's things that happen between. I mean, there is a cliffhanger that's technically left off from Saw 3 to Saw 4. You could make a movie between Saw 3 and Saw 4 that involves that cliffhanger and show us what happens there. You know, there's a lot of options that they have right now. And as much as I want to see a Spiral 2, maybe it's a good idea to get the movies done with the actors that you need right now before they get too old to be able to film or they want to retire. Because John, the actor played John Kramer was already kind of old when the first one came out. You know? Um, I don't even know how old he is right now. Um, um, Tobin Bell, I know that his name is Tobin Bell, and how old is he? Um, Tobin Bell. Oh, he's a director and a producer? Interesting. He was born August 7, 1942. Um, um, okay. August 7th, 1942. Calculate. 81 years old. So he would be 81 years old, and literally today at the time of this recording, 81 years old, one month, and 21 days. The man is in his 80s, so he filmed this, I'm guessing he filmed this last year, so he was 80. You know, or if he filmed it even with Spiral, um, he would have been 79. The man's in his 80s, you know. He's a great actor and amazing job for <laughs> an 80-year-old, you know, man. That's amazing how he acted in this movie, but you only are going to be able to do so much more with him, you know. I mean, it's fantastic that he wants to, plus again, on top of it, Thankfully, a lot of this didn't require him to have a lot of physical motions. There was actually one sequence that would require quite a bit of motion, but, you know, it's... Sorry, I'm moving moving it down again as I sit back down. Um, and I need to wrap this up because I'm going on 30 minutes now and I'm not cutting this at this point. But, you know, he's he's 81 years old. And, you know, even if he was 80 or 79... You know, how many more movies do you think he has left in him? I don't know what he wants. You know, he could be thinking of retiring. As soon as he retires, you can't make any more movies with him. 
So now's your time to make any more ideas between, um, you know, between films that would require you to use John Kramer or his voice. Um, because maybe, you know, if they got the ability from him to manufacture his voice for the movies, you could, because his voice is so iconic in that role, especially. Um, and obviously they use his voice through the entirety of one through, uh, Jigsaw and 10. Um, but, you know, how many more? I don't think they're stopping anytime soon, but, you know, the fact that they can do Spiral and it be so good, in my opinion, and do 10 and it be very good too, the, they're on a roll. They're able to create these movies. And yeah, one a year is still a lot for a low budget film, but they should, I think they should focus on the main franchise ones. Uh, fill in the gaps for now in between. And then once that happens, they can focus on the spinoffs and continue with Spiral. Uh, and then finish that story out, you know, um, which is perfectly fine by me. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching my review of Saw 10 and kind of like a, a history of Saw as well. I don't know if I'll call it that, but... Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. The cancer is still spreading. I'm afraid there's nothing else we can do. There is one person who might be able to help. Our program is a two-pronged treatment outside Mexico City. The results have been stunning. She saved my life. You're in very good hands with us. After that, what happens then? Your whole life happens then. John Kramer. According to these scans, the tumor was never removed. How much time do I have? Months, at best. I still have a lot of work that needs to be done. Tended to cure me, but what I have planned for each of you is very real. Peace came upon me, no light, no sound. The only thing I have not provided is your anesthetic, but trust me, you will want to remain alert. the men to cheat. You pick John Kramer? Please, don't hesitate. Place a big enough piece of your cerebral tissue into the glass enzyme tank. This will save your life. So sleep, silent take This is not retribution. It's a reawakening. Or die. The choice is yours.